Okay guys, I have taken out every blanket that I can find in this house and brought them in here to go through. Um, and the three bedrooms are already all made up with beds. That kind of slate blue and gray is the bedding that normally goes in the black room, the new guest room. And it's pretty, but it's really fragile. And so, and this is all the other linens that I could find throughout the house in that bin. So I'm going to be going through all of that and seeing what I can do to eliminate some of this bulk. Because the three beds are already made. Now granted, the one in the new master bed, um, it's just a quilt that I have that my mother-in-law made me um, that I wouldn't get rid of but uh, it will not be the bedding that is on that bed once we get it purchased. But anyways, okay, this is where we're starting and I'll let you see where I go to. It's ridiculous the number of blankets that two people believe that they need to have and hang on to when there are three beds in the house made up. Stupid. Okay, we have a few minutes. This is my discard pile. This is the only thing over here that I have decided that I just can't part with. They were my mother's curtains, and I know that's sentimental, but I did just take them down. It wasn't like I wasn't using them. They were in the uh, master bedroom just until like two weeks ago. So it's not like I don't use them, and they were my mother's, and she's passed on, and I'm keeping them. Just white lace curtains. Um, but I'm getting rid of this entire pile. I emptied my linens thing, and the only thing in there is two tablecloths, one for Christmas and one for all year round, this kind of yellow plaid one, tan plaid one, and one spare shower curtain. So I emptied my linen, and um, out of a huge pile of doilies, these are the ones I kept. Um, this was my grandmother's, so I'm going to keep you that. I mainly just put them out at Christmas time, but I kept these ones that were my grandma's and then a couple that I just love really thin lacy doilies um, so I kept looks like I kept six. Oh, this is I'm gonna put in my lace pile to put in pocket letters isn't that pretty this quilt right here which you can only see the pillow and down on the bottom down there is the quilt is uh, my niece Carly made this for me. It was the first thing she ever made. The quilt my sister made me. And I, uh, this sits in my spare room where the teenagers are going to be on a chair. So that's going to go back in there. My daughter-in-law made me this uh, when she was about probably maybe 18 or 19 years old. Her happy birthday. Made with love, Drew and Casey, September 22nd, 2008. So, eight years ago. Almost, almost eight years ago. It's really pretty. She did a good job. This is the backing. And there's the front. Her grandma has not only one, but she has two long arms. Turkeys might use either one of them. My daughter-in-law made me that. That's definitely staying, and I love it. I normally have that just as a lap quilt. And just a spare pillow, which of course we need because everybody's coming. This is my blankie. My sister just made me this quilt, the one that isn't coming till October. She made me this quilt for my 50th birthday. So I just got that last fall and that lays at the foot of my bed I'm not going anywhere this is my husband's blankie he sits around the house with not going anywhere my mother-in-law made my husband this quilt and me this quilt I've had this quilt for over 30 years it is threadbare but it's staying now you're gonna think we're goofy, but we pull our bed spreads down and we don't sleep with our beds, our bedding. My husband sleeps with this blanket and I sleep with that one. And then there's just a little one of those tie knotted 
pink and brown ones there that we take to a park or whatever. This is a quilt that sits up at the foot of a bed. I just took it off the foot of the bed to show uh, to bring it in here um, today. It just lays at the foot of the bed in case someone gets cold of the black room, the room that just used to be my uh, craft room just till last week on that bed. That's where that sits. And this is a vintage chenille blanket. This is the only thing I kept that has no need or purpose because I don't own a twin bed, but I love it and I cannot make myself get rid of it. And then this big entire pile is the bedding that was in our master bedroom that is now in the queen room. It's, it takes up half the room. So that's all the stuff I'm keeping. Those three little piles. I cleaned out my whole bucket and you saw how high it was. And this is all going to the Goodwill. It's just blankets, sheets, bl uh, quilts, doilies, stuff. That pile over there is uh, shams, extra sheets for bedding. Um, there's a shower curtain in there. And then there's my extra up there on that table, my extra pillowcases for when I need to change pillowcases. And that well guys, there was my uh attempt at the KonMari method. Love it or lose it, depends on how you want to call it. Um of all my linens. And I think I did exceptionally well because I have a problem with my linens. Now I will tell you, we just my husband brought it to my attention. Inside this hope chest that's sitting right there in my kitchen, because we have nowhere to put it is a quilt that my husband's great-grandmother made. Two of them. They're not going nowhere. They would never go anywhere. Um, so, they're technically linens. They're not leaving, and they're not leaving that hope chest. So, I hope you all enjoyed my KonMari method of cleaning out my linens. Have a great day. Bye-bye. God bless.